This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So now we have all the rules, let's have a look at some examples and put it into practice. So in example two, Tina sold a painting on the 1st of July 2023 for 500,000 that she bought in February 98 for 350,000. She also disposed of a commercial investment property for 310,300 in December 23 and she incurred some agency fees and she bought that property in August 99 for 200,000. In addition, she sold an antique vase for 10,000, which had cost her 15. And she has some losses brought forward from the previous tax years of 15,000 and her income for 23-24 is 50,000 pounds. This is a typical section B or section C part question where you have a variety of assets being sold some for profit, some for loss, and you have to deal with losses brought forward, and then the income tax situation, which obviously will have a bearing on the amount of tax that's having to be paid. So let's have a look at how that would work if you have multiple um, assets that need to be sold. As with all of the pro forma that we have dealt with, we need a heading. gains tax and a year. What I would suggest that you do is you set out a pro forma for this and then perhaps do workings afterwards. But with simple things, you can perhaps do them all in the same pro forma. You're going to need two columns. So we're going to deal with each asset one at a time. And I would head in lots so that the marker can see exactly what you're doing. And if you remember rightly, all the um, pro formas start with proceeds and then we deduct costs and that will give us either a gain or a profit. So the proceeds for this were 500,000 and the cost was 350,000. And you'll notice I've put that in the first column. That's kind of my working column. And I'm going to put the answer in the end. So that's one option that you have. Either that or you could do all of them as little workings and then bring the answers all together. The second one was the investment property. Again, we want proceeds. And for this, the proceeds were 310,300. And we had some cost of sales with that one of 15,000, which gives us a net figure of 295,300. Then we will deduct the purchase price or the cost one or the other and that was 200,000 which leaves us with 95,300 as our answer and again either do it in the computation like this or as a working the third one was the bars Proceeds was 10, less cost, and 15, which means we made a loss. Now the rules with losses are that any loss in the year has to be set off in full against any gains in the year before you deal with losses brought forward. So by doing it in a pro forma like this, you've actually dealt with that rule without even remembering how to do it. So that's one of the uh, bonuses with this. If you add all of those up, 150, 95 and 300 and take off the 5,000, you come to 240,300. So that's our net gains 
24, 23, 24, because obviously we've netted off the current year loss. Then we deduct the annual exempt amount, which is currently £6,000. Minus two, three, four, three hundred, and then we deduct the losses brought forward. From the question, fifteen thousand, giving us a taxable gain. Labels are important. Taxable gains of two hundred and nineteen thousand and three hundred pounds. Now the question asked us to work out the capital gains. That's going to become due. So we have two hundred and nineteen thousand three hundred. Just going to go back to the question. And it tells us there that her income is £50,000, which means she's a high-rate taxpayer. And as such, that means she will pay tax on this at 20%, which is the high rate that is applicable at the moment. That is the tax due, and that is due date. Always put the due date in if you can remember what it is. And that's due 31st of January 25, which is the 31st of January after the end of the tax year. So that's example number two. Let's have a look at example number three. So here Matthew has trade profits of £20,000, which means we are going to have to deal with the income tax position and he sold a vase and it gave rise to a gain of 18,300 what's his capital gains tax for that year now this is more like a multiple choice question you're going to have to do two things you're going to have to work out how much basic rate band he's got left to work out the tax liability and then work out the tax on the £18,300. So let's have a look at the model answer and see how that works. So here we can see there is a working, that's the answer. So the answer has been set up in a pro forma, which is what I would always suggest that you do, leaving the bits in that you can do. So basically you can do that because that's from the question. You can do that because that's from the rates, which will give you that figure and put you there. You're going to get marks of that. So you probably get a mark for doing that all the way through up to that point. You could also then put in the due date, which would get you another half a mark. Now, the working, how much basic rate band does Matthew have left so that we can then work out what rate to charge for capital gains tax? So it said it was trade profits. It didn't say taxable income it said trade profits so we've taken off the personal allowance giving us seven thousand four hundred and thirty pounds now that would be taxed at the basic rate that's the basic rate band which means that's how much basic rate band we have left as that is all within that period then he's only going to pay tax at ten percent so in order to get extra marks, you would need to show that and that. That's probably going to get you an extra two marks. So that's going to get you um, one, two and a half, and then half a mark for that. So you're looking at five marks for, for that. If it was part of a section C or a section B part of the um, exam. But if it is a multiple choice, obviously, you're just going to get it right or you're going to get it wrong. So let's go back to our notes. And let's look at example number four. Elliot has trade profits 
of 45,270. Okay, now if you take off the personal allowance for that, that's going to only give you a little bit of basic rate band left. Okay, so the calculation is going to be even more important here because some of this gain is going to be taxed at 10% and some of it is going to be taxed at 20%. So he has trade profits of 45,270 and he sold a painting giving rise to a gain of 26,300 making gift aid payments. Now what does the gift aid payment do? That's right, it extends the basic rate band. So there's actually quite a lot involved in the income tax section of this before you even get to be working out his um, capital gains tax position. So let's have a look at how that was going to work in reality. So we have Elliot. Capital gains. I mean, that because that's what the tax that we're dealing with, that's where the pro forma is, everything else is working. So the gain was £26,300. Now, the workings. We need to work out what's happening with the income tax position, don't we? So, trade profits. were 45,270. Take off the personal allowance. 12,570, which leaves me with 32,700. Okay, so basic rate band, 37,700, plus the gross pension payment Now, the question said, let's go back, just check. That's what he paid, which means we have to gross it up. So that was £2,400 times 100 over 80, which will give us a total by the time we've finished of 40700 That needs to come off there, 32700 which gives us a balance of £8,000 in our basic rate band. Now you can see there's a lot of workings there. Show every working that you do because all of that's going to get you marks. One, you've extended the basic rate band. You've taken off the personal allowance and you've worked out how much basic rate band's left. A lot of marks potentially for that. Okay, so this is our gain position. We need to take off the annual exempt amount, which is 6,000, which leaves us with 20,300. Okay, so that's our taxable gain. And because we know that 8,000 of the basic rate band is left, that's going to be taxed at 10%. And the balance of that which is 12,300 will be taxed at 20%, which is the high rate figure because that's what he's in now. So that's 800, no pence, don't forget, 2,460. So his capital gains for the year is 32,000, sorry, 3,260 due 31st of January 2025. Let's go back to the notes. So let's have a look at example number five. We have Gaynor here, who has trade profits of 21,700 in 23-24 and no other taxable income. Now she sold two assets during the tax year, a residential investment property, giving rise to a gain of that, and a diamond ring with a gain of that. And we've got to work out her 
in uh, capital gains tax computation. So let's have a look at the model answer, shall we? So because the property is being taxed at a different rate, it needs to go in a separate column because property, residential property is taxed at 18 and 28%. So we have two different columns here just to make it easier. So we've copied out the question and we have put the annual exempt amount against the largest gain, the one that's going to be taxed at the largest amount. Then we need to work out the income tax position. Again, the same sort of thing. So the income tax for her, she had £21,770 worth of income, which has a personal allowance to be deducted from it of 12,570, giving a gain of um, a, a taxable amount of 9,200. So we have some basic rate band left. We have 28,500. And therefore, we're going to put that against this one first because it's going to be taxed at the highest amount. So all of that will be taxed at 18%, which is the lower basic rate figure for at residential properties and then we will put the balance of the basic rate band here and charge that at 10% against the ring with the balance being taxed at 20%.